And we are live. Hello, Canada and uh, Facebook friends. My name is Eli Glasner. I'm a CBC uh, entertainment reporter and film critic. And uh, we have a great Oscar panel with us this afternoon to talk to you about a show. I don't even know what to expect from this show, but I have two very smart people here to help me uh, inform you. So let me introduce our panel. We have from the Cleo uh, Journal, uh, co-editor and film critic Mallory Andrews, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Sud Sutherland, uh, he is a director and producer in Toronto. You might have seen his recent CBC show, Shoot the Messenger. Sud, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for having me. All right, so Sud, let's start with you. It's been a remarkable year in Hollywood in terms of the Me Too movement, uh, then Time's Up, the allegations against producer Harvey Weinstein, and uh, a push for greater uh, diversity uh, and representation on the screen. How fair is it for the, uh, to ask the Oscars to reflect everything that's happening right now? <laughs> that's very funny. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I think you're gonna ask as, to be as fair as possible. I think mm -hmm. you, the, the makeup of the Oscar voters have changed slightly. Yeah. Uh, it's been opened up, so I think that you'll see some surprises. I think that we saw some surprises last year with Moonlight being the Best Picture mm -hmm. uh, winner, and obviously the whole snafu around the, the, the yes. envelopes and blah, blah, blah. But I think um, you're going to... You're good. I think you'll see some surprises. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, what everybody's not going to have their, you know, movie win because no, that's mm -hmm. not possible. But I think you'll see some surprises. That's yeah. all I can say. It, it has been just as someone who I had to actually commit my choices to a ballot. I tweeted it out a few hours ago. And there's, I mean, there's some categories there. I keep second guessing myself because it's kind of a combination between conventional wisdom and then like the zeitgeist but what's been happening what's been in the headlines every day Mallory what, what are your expectations for the the show in general um, well I think that I think the Golden Globes was a good mm. indicator in terms of like the tone of the night um, of course the Globes happened when all of this was much fresher right. and right. Uh, sort of happened just before me too and times up sort of became hashtags mm. um, uh, so I think it's absolutely fair to expect that, um, I like to think of the Oscars as like the yearbook at the end of the year for Hollywood. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily, you don't go, to, you shouldn't go to the Oscars expecting to um, see the most um, qualified films right. being awarded. It's just sort of like a snapshot of like what we've been talking about throughout the year and this right. is sort of how it's happened. So I think um, even in the makeup of the, what, who the presenters are going to be, I think they sort of tweeted out, it's much more diverse than it has been in previous years. I think th what they're going for is mm -hmm. to um, at least pay some sort of, uh, make the optics look good, at least. So we have a comment uh, from our Facebook audience, uh, and this is from Kathleen. She says, the Oscars shouldn't address me too. Sorry, but they should focus on the winners and their accomplishments. Do you have a response? Um, I think that looking at who the nominees are and mm -hmm. whether or not, uh, you know, what the, um, how diverse they are, mm -hmm. how many women versus men, that is all tied into Me Too and the sort of various power structures that have been in play in Hollywood. Um, uh, it's all interconnected. Yeah. Like you can't just focus on uh, who's, gonna, who's the best in Hollywood, who deserves to be awarded without sort of looking at, okay, but why are these particular yeah. people in general up here? Um, I think what Me Too Two has really uh, um, shown us is that there are careers that have been destroyed because of it. Mm. Who is not at this year's Oscars because of that? Right, right. Suds, what do you think? I mean, do you think a movie such as Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri would be as much a contender if we didn't have this conversation right now around Me Too? I don't know that it, I mean, it's a great film, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it'd be with this level of seriousness thinking that, oh, it's a dark horse to, yeah. you know, to be, you know, the best picture. Um, but I think that we can't divorce, as much as we'd like to, divorce these films mm -hmm. and whether the one is going to win or not uh, from the, t the moment in time that it is. That just as Mallory said yeah. in terms of, a, a, it's, it's the yearbook, it's a snapshot. James Franco is not nominated. Right. So in any other year, he would have been, and he would have, might have won. Right. Um, but because of the speculation around the allegations around his behavior mm -hmm. as an entitled young man, 
as an entirely yeah. young white man who's like fucking re mm -hmm. really attractive uh, and also has a, a, a film school, an acting school that he's got at this crop of young women to pick from. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, sort of getting into that sort of absolute power category, you right. know? And right. so, like, to take that, like, and to say that we can't talk about that, and, and again, like, I'm not trying to deny anybody's voice, even in terms of mm -hmm. the, who just wrote in. It's like, we have to talk about these things, Oscar so white, whatever hashtag you want to call it. Like, we have to talk about this moment in time because we're trying to affect some change here. Yeah. And so, like, when, you know, we're talking about, you know, a woman like Mira Sorvino, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and exact, because I, I had that conversation with myself, my wife, about, like, where the hell is Mira Sorvino? Like, yeah. after my Ma Mighty Aphrodite, she was like, she won an Academy Award. What the hell happened? After her career just and, sort of stopped. And actually, Judd, so we're talking about women who have accused Harvey Judge. Weinstein and then seem to kind of disappear mm -hmm. off the radar. And, and I know from when, you know, just as a director, I, I ask other directors, like, oh, what's that person like? How's that, you know, because that's going to factor into your decision whether I'm going to hire that person or not. Mm -hmm. And when Peter Jackson said, actually, this is what they told me about mm -hmm. her when she was on our short list. Because how, how Hollywood works is that you have a list of people to like to hire, right. and you choose from this list, and then you go and you've got your number one pick. You call them, figure out if you're going to work together, etc., and then you go down the line. And mm -hmm. so, if somebody's actually actively working against you, you can very f soon find yourself off these lists. And it's interesting, actually. Judd is actually going to be, as you mentioned, kind of the diversity, but also sense of equality in the presenters uh, on Sunday. She's presenting tonight, mm -hmm. and she essentially started this ball rolling, one of the first women to come out and speak to the New York Times about her allegations against Harvey Weinstein. But we have another interesting question from um, one of our, our, our audience members. Um, Jerry is, uh, Philip is asking, are all the Oscars about best box office? So, putting aside some of these current issues for a moment, how much of this is about just success, Mallory, and how much does that kind of sway the voters in terms of like, look at how well that did? I don't think that has as much of a pull as it once did. Mm. Um, I mean, you look back at the history of the Oscars, and I'm going way back to um, comedies in the 30s winning mm. Best Picture Oscars. Like, uh, um, it happened one night. Right. Uh, that was, you know, one of the highest grossing movies of the year, and it won the Oscar for Best Picture. You don't quite see that kind of matchup anymore. You're more likely to see the highest box office grossing movies winning in effects categories right. or um, uh, production design and whatnot. I can I can remember years where a movie like Titanic or Lord of the Rings like that would be a monster and it would yeah, it would like suck up all the awards. But you're right that those kind of event movies, those popcorn films, have been kind of pushed aside for something like I mean Moonlight was not a box office success, but it managed to take home some of the, the biggest prizes. Mm -hmm. But, it, but it, for its weight, it was a box office success. Right. And yeah. it, it, it in terms of profitability? Profitability in terms mm -hmm. of like it's punching above its weight. And again, like for a film to be profitable, a $200 million film has to reach over a billion right. dollars, you know, in terms of its profitability because of marketing and p and and all it's going to cost. But when a film like, um, you know, Moonlight does well, mm -hmm. a film like My Big Fat Greek Wedding does well, they get recognized. So yeah. it is in inextricably linked to, to box office. But in terms of it's like, oh, well, it's not like the Grammys. You know, the Grammys, I don't even consider them an award because it's like, mm -hmm. here, this got the best, you know, record sales and this is who's going to yeah. win all the Grammys. It, I don't think it's the same thing. But I think that you don't get on the radar unless you have some sort of like box office, uh, box office achievement. Let me read this question from Ben C. He says, what do you see being the socio-cultural impact of the recent Me Too movement on the future mentality of the Oscars? Will representation in the Oscars be a reflection of a more globalized impact? So Ben's cramming a lot of stuff into that question, but do you want to take on some of that, Mallory? Um, sure, I'll unpack a little bit of that. Uh, I am a little bit skeptical of the Oscars' ability to continue this trend. Mm, really? Um, yeah. Do so you think this might be more of a, a almost a fad or something? Well, it seems like Hollywood is only capable of talking about one issue at a time. Mm. Uh, because last year we were talking about Oscars so white. Right. And it sort of seems like that has disappeared from the conversation, even though it is still an issue. And mm. they have taken steps to fix it, but it doesn't mean it's been fixed. Right. And um, Oscar So White and Me Too are inextricably linked as um, uh, problems because they all have to do with the um, power structures within Hollywood mm -hmm. and um, who gets awarded and who doesn't. Um, 
there does seem to feel some uh, something does seem to feel different though about this time, like a willingness to sort of take it more seriously. It sort of feels like mm -hmm. it was. It feels like a last straw situation. So I am hopeful, hmm. but I wouldn't be surprised if. Um, uh, yeah. It didn't last. It's an interesting moment because on the one hand you have a host like Jimmy Kimmel mm -hmm. who when I see him I still think of the guy who used to host The Man Show which involved women jumping up and down on trampolines and yet even this guy has undergone an evolution and seems more kind of open to the conversation that we're having. The producers have said that there is going to be a Me Too moment. They are going to address it or I think they mentioned Time's Up in the show. but. Suds, so, I don't want to keep giving you the, the tough questions, but um, D. Ryan Arnold says, why do we have to deal with politics at an award show? Well, that's a really large question. And I think when we're talking about an award mm -hmm. based on an economic cultural system mm -hmm. that is now undergoing a massive reevaluation about how we got here. Um, we can't divorce politics from the personal, the, from right. the cultural. And in terms of like, because it's not just to have a superhero like Captain America, you know, and now there's Black Panther and, and then that, there's also Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So, and now hopefully there'll be a, you know, a, you know, Storm, for example. But in, in terms of it, you're having a, a central character being a powerful white male. There's a reason why that architecture and support structure and the infrastructure um, generates a $200 million investment in, the, in, in making that movie. It's right. another $200 million to advertise it globally so that when it makes a million or a million and a half, then it's considered successful. That, there's a whole superstructure to support that. And we didn't get here overnight. Mm -hmm. There was a study in 2011, and it's from Indiana University, it's, um, and it's Basically, the study was, well, what happens to white people when they watch a movie? Right. And so it looked at white viewership, black viewership, and, and, and the notion of black subjectivity. So long article, great, but this, the abstract is this. You're, in, it's an fMRI study, so it's magnetic resonance imaging. Mm -hmm. And so they looked at what happened inside of, of a white person's brain as they're watching a white actor on screen. These areas are activated. When that same person is looking at a black actor doing the same task, those areas that were activated are not fired. Hmm. So it's an actual experience because the, the, the brain says self and not self, self and other. And so when you're in a movie and you're looking at somebody who looks like you and you feel and you can put yourself in that category, then that's the self and you're involved in experience. As a black viewer, I've had to be Bobby Brady and I had to do this from a, from a very young age. Mm -hmm to the point where it can actually be life or death for me when I, you listen to Philando Castile's mm -hmm. wife or girlfriend when she's talking to the cop. She has to put herself in that position. Yeah. She's gotta be able to actually put herself in the cop's position. Sir, I am not moving. You've shot him dead. You heard yeah. how calm her voice was. We have to do that on a daily basis. We have to do that in order to stay alive. The average white viewer doesn't have to do that. Now we're seeing films like a Black Panther, we're seeing mm -hmm. like a Get Out, we're seeing these films now. And again, this is majority white males, but now, now we can see a Lady Bird and get into that too. And so now we can't divorce, divorce politics. So this is the kind of, of the power of representation on screen and also perhaps Absolutely. the power of empathy. <laughs> of, 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 it's of, really even about empathy. As, as an audience who, uh, you know, someone like myself, who can't necessarily associate, uh, uh, relate to a Black Panther character, but then seeing it in a different kind of role, seeing it in the context of a superhero movie, and having, having that have make, make a difference to me. Absolutely, I've read a commentary in Huffington Post, uh, Asian dude says, I related as an Asian dude to Black Panther. Yeah. And it's like, it doesn't matter who you are, I've related to any story of any underdog, I'll relate yeah. to that person, you know, Lady Bird, whatever, like I'll relate, I'll put myself there. But I think that as we evolve as a community, as a society, we're able to actually get into this person's narrative or that person's narrative and actually make it a success. Okay, oh, let's yeah. bring it down to the awards for a moment. That was... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. No, no, it's Sorry. great. It's great. I mean, that's why we're here. Do you think Get Out will bring home any trophies? Yeah, I think, I think it'll, like, honestly, I think it'll get the best screenplay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's got an outside shot to get best picture, but I think Shape of Water is a safe choice mm -hmm. and it will win. 
or it might win. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. See, I think um, Shape of Water and Three Billboards seem to be the front runners in the um, uh, reading that I've done about it. To the point where I think that they could cancel each other out and Get Out could be the dark horse winner. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like the Who more knows? I think, the thinking about it, the more I'm, I think I've gone out on a limb and I'm predicting Get Out because basically what happened last year with Moonlight, and so I don't. I don't know anymore. I mean, if, if, <laughs> if Moonlight can win over La La Land, which seemed to be like the picture perfect, like air kiss to old fashioned Hollywood, and Moonlight beat that, then Get Out can beat Shape of Water. I don't know. But let's continue and talk about the, the pleasures of visuals for a moment with cinematography. Who here is uh, rooting for Roger, Roger Deakins? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, not just for Blade Runner, which is a movie that I loved a lot. Mm -hmm. I know not a lot of my colleagues were um, as into it as I was. Um, I am somebody who doesn't mind giving out Oscars for career-related reasons, right. and not just for the film that's sort of up for an award. And he's the Susan Lucci of cinematography, yeah, exactly. right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Always nominated. What is it, like 14 nominations or yeah. something? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I'm sort of, it's like his Departed. Like, it's about time. <laughs> 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 okay. Departed's a great movie, but like, you know. We yeah. have a question here. What about LGBT representation at the Oscars? So we've touched about, upon issues of race. We've touched upon Me Too. How are we doing on, on on that topic? I guess there's a fantastic woman, right? There's a fantastic woman and Call Me By Your Name. Right, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm focusing on uh, <laughs> on that great uh, performance by the transgender actor, but we have Call Me By Your Name. But what what do you think Call Me... What, what awards could Call Me By Your Name? Beautiful, aching love story of these two, two young men. What do you think it could bring home? Best adapted screenplays, okay. what I think. Um, uh, I'm not sure why it didn't sort of gain as much traction award-wise for Best Picture uh, uh, over um, uh, Shape of Water mm -hmm. and uh, Three Billboards. Like, to me, um, I feel like the Oscars is constantly needs to atone for Brokeback Mountain. Like, we're not <laughs> awarding Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> um, like, we, like, yeah. uh, it, um, and... It's true. And the sense... When, when Crash won, right? That's yeah, that was the yes, other Crash won. And there's sort of like a, uh, a double atonement for that with um, Moonlight winning, because right. it's both a, um, a black story as well as an LGBT story. Mm -hmm. And I always fear that the sense is like, okay, we let that one win, so we're fine now. We can like go back <laughs> to like, we don't have to sort of keep that kind of thing in mind. Right. Well, speaking of, so I'm thinking of Call Me By Your Name, thinking of um, Timothy Chalamet's amazing performance, and that brings me to the Best Actor category. So Suds, we have Timothy Chalamet, Daniel Day-Lewis, Daniel Kaluuya, Gary Oldman, and Denzel Washington. Your, well, who would you vote for first before you, if you care to make a prediction? <laughs> um, of the performances that I've yeah. seen, um, I just think like Timothy Kelly May. Yeah. The reason why is, I mean, rarely actors in their 20s get nominated in this category, mm. and they rarely also win. Um, but uh, I thought he's just uh, insane. Like, it's yeah. just insane. So, like, that was fantastic. I thought Daniel Kaluuya was great, mm -hmm. um, especially if you actually listen to who Daniel Kaluuya is yeah. in his real British life. British actor. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's a British actor. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, no way. So he did a fantastic job, but I don't know if, um, in terms of, like, just just putting up the roles yeah. one up against the other, it, the, this was a bigger performance. And so it just, I, sometimes they get not, you know, you'll get awarded because of a flashy performance. Yeah. Who knows? But honestly, it is anybody's game. Really? Because it seems like it's Gary Oldman's now his time. to lose. It seems, and that yeah. thing is the, it's the his time. And it's almost like Timothy Chalamet is too young. Like he hasn't earned it. Like, whereas Good. Gary, we all, we all know who Gary is. And, and so it's like, okay, it's his, perhaps his turn. Yeah, which I I don't think it's his turn. I don't um I enjoyed Darkest Hour. Yeah. And the performance was it's a very typical Oscar performance. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody transforming themselves to become a historical figure right. and we're sort of judging it based on like, oh that really does sound like He looks, looks just like, like, like yeah. Winston Churchill. <laughs> which is a which is a type of acting yeah. that's perfectly legitimate, but it just seems to be the same type of acting that gets awarded over mm -hmm. and over and over and over. Whereas um, I agree that uh, Timothy Chalamet is my pick as well because it's somebody it, he, he feels like a real person. Yeah. Like I didn't once 
feel him acting, or like it was, you're, you're sitting right. watching it, like I feel somebody, this is an actor playing a role, which um, you do feel a lot with uh, Daniel Day-Lewis in Phantom Thread. I think it's effective in that way, right. where it's like really a mannered performance, mm -hmm. but purposely mannered, whereas uh, Timothy Chalamet is sort of making something very difficult look very easy. Now, you had an interesting uh, look at Phantom Thread, and you think that actually speaks to this Me Too moment that yeah. we're witnessing. Um, I don't necessarily think that this was intended by mm -hmm. um, Paul Thomas Anderson, because mm -hmm. um, obviously this was in production before Me Too sort of became a um, hashtag mm -hmm. issue. Uh, but I do think it speaks to this idea of a difficult male genius who feels he's entitled to control everything around him, and a woman who sort of stakes her claim for her own territory within right. that relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and it does so in a way that's sort of very, um, without spoiling anything, it does go to a place that's very unexpected mm -hmm. and I think hilarious. I've seen it twice in theaters now mm -hmm. and the, I've la I think it's a comedy. Like I've I laughed. would not really? Yeah. It's, Interesting. Um, I think it's uh, shooting for a comedy. Right. Um, but you're right, there is a relevance there and it, 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 it speaks to, I mean, the stories that we, Harvey Weinstein was able to do what he did and had this, rep he was notorious just as a bully, but no one reined them in because I think there's this feeling in the industry and you know you're in the industry more than I am, Suds, but that it, people are allowed to get away with bad behavior because they're of their so-called talent. Yeah, and, and if you read the accounts from a lot of the women, they were like, Oh, he was in his bathrobe in the in the hotel room. So mm -hmm. actually, I didn't question it because I heard he was kind of weird like that. Right. And these idiosyncrasies are kind of given to people of that stature, yeah. and so you wouldn't think anything of it. Like, mm -hmm. but in, in in actuality, you should be thinking you should not go in this room. Right. So now I, I we got a YouTube viewer. We're also streaming on YouTube, by the way, because we're mm -hmm. fancy like that. Who asked how many trophies there are? So I don't know. I suppose anybody knows. I'm going to count <laughs> right now. One, Google. two, Come on. three, four, That's five, Google. six, Come on. I think like seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Wasn't that great digital content? Twenty-four <laughs> trophies. Thank you in, for in, asking. In the televised portion, but there's all kinds of scientific and right. There's yeah. all that kinds too. of stuff too. And there's always like the little ones where, like, if you're in the Oscar pool, like sound mixing and sound editing, and like which one, and then the the, the short films and whatnot. Are there any uh, Canadians at the Oscars that either of you have your eyes on as we head towards Sunday? What Canadians are at the Oscars? Well, I, I know a lot of people who've done a lot of sound work on um, on Shape of Water. Oh, yeah. So oh, that's right. like a local, that's a big local story. But Shape of Water was filmed in Toronto. Guillermo del Toro lives here. Uh, he's and practically an honorary Toronto. He's an honorary Toronto. Brought so much work to, to the city. Canadian production designer, mm. and so, many craft people working on that film. And, and also the TV shows like The Strain, you know. So, like, there's a lot of Guillermo here and a lot of love for him here. So, there's a lot of people who are rooting for uh, the post production team on Shape of Water. There's the also sound. the breadwinner, right? So, that's oh, the absolutely. Canadian yes. Irish co right. production. Beautiful little animated mm -hmm. film set in. Kabul and any big Christopher Plummer fans here? Did you enjoy his performance in, in All the Money in the World? Um, I actually haven't seen it. You haven't? I have not. Okay. Um, because you have until Sunday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> She's rushing out to do that. <laughs> uh, sometimes in a case like that, I kind of like to sit back and see what the conversation is before I go in and yeah. sort of judge that performance because of, uh, again, this sure, is like this is that. That performance is a direct product yes. of uh, Me Too and, and recasting um, uh, recasting Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's sort of like the inverse case of um, um, James Franco not being nominated, I think, yeah. is nominating right. his performance. And this is side on scene. Like, yeah. I, I've yeah. not seen it, so I can't yeah. judge the performance, but that seems to be the impression. No, and, I, and I think it's our, you could make the case. I, I it's a good it's a good performance. Um, I think he makes what is kind of a humdrum action film a little more interesting to watch just because he brings so much gravitas to it. But I do think uh, in the nomination, I don't think he'll go further than the nomination, but I think part of the nomination is almost like a pat on the back for saving that film mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for helping mm -hmm. erase 
uh, Kevin Spacey. We're going to uh, to wrap up so you can take all our insights and uh, fill in your <laughs> check marks on your ballot. But uh, I'm gonna before I let you go, uh, your what do you what do you want to see? What's the outcome you're you're hoping for? I'll ask both of you. I'll start with you, Mallory, for this Sunday. Uh, the outcome culturally, or the outcome for the awards winner? You, you. I see your pin, so we can get more specific. But uh, would you take it wherever you like. Um, I'm kind. Of, I'm just interested just to see where all the chips land at the end of the night before mm. sort of making a prediction of like how is Hollywood going to proceed from here. Right. Um, so the this only is thing I'm really th in love with is like for Agnes Varda to win for best documentary. And tell people what the documentary is. Uh, that would be Faces Places, okay. um, uh, Torontonians is. that will be screening again at the TIFF Bell Lightbox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, and best picture prediction? Uh, I think it will either be the front runner, no, you I gotta, think. You gotta pick one. Pick one yeah, uh, sorry. that I want or that I think No, you think, you gotta, you're putting it all, <laughs> all right. you're coming to you next side, so don't laugh. Oh, God. Oh, I'm gonna put myself, put my neck on the line and say get out. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> Hopes for the show and best picture prediction. I hope there's no snafus. Like I, yeah. I know that with uh, Barry Jenkins and Moonlight, that whole thing just really fucked it up in terms of like just the enjoyment and the experience yeah. of it. Um, it kind of put a pall on his whole year. He said, um, but uh, I hope that the show goes off without a hitch in terms of uh, everybody gets nominated and nobody loses that sort of joy of, mm -hmm. of winning. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then have it hearing your name called, and have, hope that all goes uh, according to plan. Uh, and I hope you know it, it's like people try to you know vote their passion and just vote for the best thing that they saw mm -hmm. that year. I really hope that's what it's about, um, as opposed to equity or fairness or whatever. Yeah. I think that like there's a lot of great nominees. There's been, there's been we some do good tend films to this second year. guess yeah. things and put yeah. all the politics and the zeitgeist. But you're right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it should when you. Fill out that ballot. What do you? What do you think was I mean, the, the best? changes should happen yeah. in Hollywood on the production level, right? Whereas, which is why I think of the Oscars as the yearbook at the end of the year of right. like, okay, yeah. this right. is what Hollywood was doing to fix diversity throughout okay. the year, and now it's reflected in the Oscars. Yeah, I mean, I think that in you know, in terms of production here too, like it's the same thing. Like mm -hmm. it's like we need to look at our own films as well because they're sure. <laughs> completely not diverse in this country. So I think that hopefully, you know, I think Get Out will might win the Best Picture. Um, I think it's probably going to win the best screenplay. Okay. Um, but, you know, that's my best picture pick. My best picture pick, as I mentioned on air, is actually Get Out. So you got two Get Outs and a maybe Get Out. We could be wrong. Um, you can <laughs> add your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching us on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And uh, good luck in the Oscar pool. For CBC News, I'm Eli Glasner. Bye. You can uh, just give it a sec because it takes a while to wind down the internet machine. But that was <laughs> that was great. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna wait for the we're officially wrapped. Maybe we'll all be right, and then we'll be we'll look like <laughs> geniuses. <laughs> we're gonna